Hey everyone, MBA 610. We're going to make a video going through some of that forecasting that Robert Casper did in class last week, and it will be your prep work to turn this in. So what you can see here is basically just the data that you were given as the student data. We have three variables, date, deliveries, and fraudulent deliveries. And we need to make a forecast that shows us how deliveries are likely to have looked out into the future when we're looking at um, a road show trying to get investors sometime around November 16th. And our data only goes till the 21st. So let's start by just plotting this in a couple of ways. Let's take a look at deliveries. Get rid of some lines. Add some horizontal axis labels. Those will be the dates. Great. And this is just total deliveries. And we know from looking at this chart before that the total numbers of deliveries in this food delivery company look a little bit like they're trending upward, which makes sense because the company's growing, which is why they're trying to get more financing, thus the roadshow. And then on the 15th, we instigated a plan to in introduce friction in the checkout process. And we may have reduced the number of all deliveries in addition to just reducing fraudulent deliveries. So let's take a look at mapping or plotting fraudulent deliveries. I'm happy with this chart and the layout, so I'm just gonna copy it and paste it down below. And then I can move the box containing the data from deliveries to fraudulent deliveries. You may also have to move the title. And now I've got a chart of fraudulent deliveries. And as we've all sort of agreed, the drop off in the number of fraudulent deliveries is substantial. For total deliveries, we can't really tell. So we're going to try to project what we see here, the seasonal rise and fall of the weekly ebbs and flows, weekends being high, midweeks being low, in addition to what appears to be an inward and upward trend. We're going to try to capture those things, quantify them, and use them to project what is going to happen in the future. But before we're going to do that, we're going to try to identify what that trend is and remove it from the data, turning this from an upward trending time series into a flat trending time series. It'll still have the ebbs and flows from the, from the weeks, but first we're going to get rid of the trend. So to do that, we have to find a number that explains how well this data set is trending upward. And that number, from what we can experience or what we know, is the slope. We've got sort of two periods here. We have a pre period before we added friction, and a post period after we added friction. And if I think that friction impacted our growth trajectory, which it may or may not have done, I just want to use the pre-period to estimate the growth rate of my total deliveries. We could use the regression function, you know, here under the data tab, linear regression or under data analysis, but there's an easier way and doesn't require us to use a whole new tab. And that is using Excel has a function called, and actually I want to insert some spaces here before I get started. I want to detrend deliveries and then I want to deseasonalize. Deseasonalized and detrended. Great. Okay, so date in Excel can be funny. I'm going to introduce a new variable here. 
that is just called capital T for time. And I'm going to define each time period. Don't worry about that. Pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Those are not dates. Those are numbers. I'm going to enter one through five. I'm going to highlight them. I'm going to drag them down. And then this number becomes a time variable, T. And it's one in the first day, two on the second day, three on the third day, four on the fourth day, right? All the way down to the 35th day. Number, no decimals. So then rather than trying to do a linear regression with dates as the X variable, which can be a tad bit unpredictable, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do a linear regression and I'm going to ask for the slope of the line that best fits the data. I'm going to ask for the intercept of the line that best fits the data and I'm going to ask for the R squared of the line that best fits the data. And the formulas are these. Slope, it wants to know our known y variables. So for y I've got deliveries, right? That's my y variable. And then it wants to know my known x's, which is my horizontal axis variable, which is the date, but we're just going to use time. So I've got deliveries, all the ones up until the point where we instigated the friction. And then the time is going to be my first 28 days. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. I'm just double checking that I drew that line in the right place. Before I move on, I'm just going to copy my cell range so that I don't have to re-enter it two more times. Copy. Great. So the slope is 5,833. My intercept. My R squared. It's giving me a warning that I'm omitting adjacent cells, that's fine, we're going to ignore it. And so what this model basically tells us is that if we were to just use a linear model, it would say that our forecast for whatever next period was would be equal to 393,562, that's the intercept, plus time times the slope. And what that implies is that sales, or deliveries in this case, increase by 5,833 deliveries a day. So if I want to detrend this data, my detrended deliveries, my very first day, I don't need to detrend it because it's my launching point. But the second day that I want to detrend, I'm going to take my sales for that day and I'm going to subtract that slope. And then I'm going to multiply it by, well, OK, let's try it a different way, in exact science. So my first one, my d deliveries, is going to be 292,000 minus my slope. Why? Because from the period before, from the day before this data collection began, I would have expected 5,800 increase in daily sales, and this time I'm trying to take that out. And I'm entering the formula as my expected deliveries minus my slope coefficient multiplied by time. I know what you are saying. Let's try this again. So there it is. If we take out the trend, we take the deliveries for the day and we subtract our expected daily growth multiplied by the time. Why do I want to multiply daily growth by the time? Because it's the first day we'd grow by 5,800, but then the second day there'd be two days of 5,800 that I'd need to overcome. So I can plot this. How far is it going to go down? Okay, let's, all right. So if I add this, 
new series. No, I should have left that all. Pardon me. I'm going to highlight it and go back and get it. What I see is that this increase that was happening, right, that, that trending upward has been removed and now basically it's just, we've lost that expected upward increase, right? We've removed the trend. I'm gonna pause this and then restart and we'll tackle, talk about tackling that seasonal pattern. All right, see you again in a second.